back again. I love these times. Uh, seems like everybody is paying more attention. And I seem to have more time to do them. More inspiration to do them. But let's uh, have a discussion. Or you can just listen. Well, my thought for today is... Why is this so hard to believe? You know, looking at everything that's going on. What's up, Blake? Looking at everything that's going on, you know, and it it's, uh, what's up, Kev? It's a lot that um, obviously is going on right now in regards to uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19, um, and many people are finding it difficult to believe that it's real. Um, you know, people coming up with conspiracy theories and things like that. And for anyone who knows me, you know, I'm, I've always been a conspiracy theorist. Uh, one of the biggest ones, to be honest. However, um, this what is happening right now is not unprecedented. It is not something that has never happened. It is not something that we've never seen before. We've seen it as short as uh, 102 years ago when the Spanish flu uh, pandemic took place. And I was just watching a documentary on it this morning this dawning, as I like to call it, um, where they were talking about just in the United States alone, 675,000 people died from the Spanish flu in 1918. This was the same year that my great grandmother was born. Uh, and so I'm looking at this and I'm looking and I'm thinking and I'm like, why is this so hard to believe? Why are people trying so hard to pin this pandemic on uh, governments and 5G technology and all of these things? And I'm not saying, mind you, I'm not saying that these things are not factors. I've done enough research in my life. <laughs> I've done enough research over the last, I'll say, 10 to 12 years that I know that these governments, these companies, because really that's what they are, are companies. They're not governments. Uh, they're not nations. They're companies. But I've done enough research to know that there are sinister um, uh, agendas that take place. I've done enough research to know that there are hidden groups that are maneuvering and manipulating um, events in society and manipulating people and powers. You can go on Netflix right now and look up uh, the documentary called The Family and look at how this Christian organization is influencing leaders all over the world and has been for decades. Uh, and it's very clear right and so I know that there are many sinister plots going on I know that there are many things happening many laws being passed the 5g thing all of this right I know that these things happen R correct <laughs> correct David um, I don't know what you mean when you say no plural Anthony uh, if you can you know let me know but um, but knowing all of this has happened doesn't mean, ah, I see what you, I see what you mean. Yeah. They're all working together. I mean, we know that. Um, but even with that knowledge, right. Even understanding that there are, uh, powers in place in high, high places, right. <laughs> what they consider high places that are, manipulating things in the world 
it still does not mean that it's not possible for a virus to have taken place and had the impact that it is having. It may be correlated to all these things. I don't know. And it's okay to say you don't know. It's okay to say I'm not sure. It's okay to say we don't know where this came from. You don't have to pin it on somebody trying to kill millions and billions of people. Right? Yes, it was. <laughs> Blake, it, it, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, I get what you mean, Anthony. Um, and so my point is just that we are trying so hard to blame somebody for what is happening. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that there's no one behind any of this. I'm All I'm saying is that we have to focus on what we can focus on. We have to focus on what we can control. We can't control the government. We can rise up against them or whatever, but we cannot, we don't have the firepower, we don't have the technology, we don't have all of these things that they have that they've been using for a super long time to con to, to mind control us the, the, throughout the media, you know, to, to place fear in our hearts with weapons of mass destruction and, and guns and tanks and, you know, all of these things. We don't have these resources. We don't have them flat out. That's the truth. We do not have them, right? So we cannot fight them at their game, right? What we can control is what we can control, and that is ourselves. We can't control anything else. Exactly. The reasons are irrelevant. Everything's happening for a reason. None of this is random. I've had enough spiritual experiences to know that nothing is random. There are no coincidences. All of this is by design. Whether you like it or not, it is. By design by the government, by design by the one in ultimate control, which is the creator, right? Who is allowing all of this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Xenia. We try to control everything but ourselves. And that is a, quite frankly, a damn shame. It's a shame. It's really a shame. And so I, my thing is like, let's stop throwing out all of this panic. Let's stop throwing out all of this fear mongering. Let's stop throwing out all of this, we gotta get ready for blah, blah, blah. Like, come on, man. Like, that's not how we're gonna do it. Absolutely. Natural law will always prevail. You are absolutely right. Because when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, even the ones who think they're in control, they don't have control over this planet. This planet can kill every last species that walks this earth or swims in the ocean today and be done with it. We forget that the planet is a breathing, living being. It's going to do whatever it wants to do. We forget that the planet has more power over us than we think it does. We think, we think, we are so arrogant as a species. We are so arrogant to think that we have control over the sea, over the earth, over the wind, over the over the, all of the elements, over the periodic table, over we we think we have control. It's so hard not to be afraid for me right now solely because I have children. I understand, bro. So do I. And I haven't seen them in 2 months. 
I'm out here serving the people, working my ass off. But it's like we gotta we gotta we gotta switch the mindset. We gotta remember that the earth is in control. That mama, right? <laughs> Mother Earth is in control. If she wants to destroy those in power today, she can do that. This is all, while the earth seems so grand and large and huge to us, and I'm speaking to what Xenia said about cells in a larger, larger organism, uh, they're trying, but they can't. They can try to manipulate the weather and do all these types of things, but in all actuality, what everything that they try to do backfires because we have to remember that there are laws to this unbreakable laws of nature that everything they do every cause that they cause creates an effect and eventually it's going to come back to them this is karma this is cause and effect this is reaping what we sow they can try to change the weather. They can try to do all the stuff that they want to do, but it's not going to save them in the end. <laughs> the only people that are going to be okay are the people who are in tune with the earth, in tune with the spirit of the earth. There have been natural disasters for millennia, tens of thousands of years. We read about Atlantis, right? And we think that it's a myth. We think that it's just some thing that Plato made up. No, that was real. Nature took Atlantis down. Nature did. We forget we have to bow to nature. She's always in control. Always. Always. Yes, we are part of the consciousness that created nature. We are part of nature. We forget that we are actually part of nature, right? <laughs> we think that nature is just all around us and we live in it. No, we are part of it. Our bodies are made up of the same minerals, the same elements, the same, you know what I'm saying? We're part of it. Our consciousness is part of it. And because we know we're part of it, and because we know that nature comes from God, that nature is God, that we are God, we're all part of the same breathing organism. We have to bow to nature. We have to bow to ourselves. And remember that the ego is not in control. No matter what it tries to do, it's not in control. No matter how much it tries to be in control. Have you ever been in a relationship where you got jealous because of something your spouse did or something your partner did or something your girlfriend or boyfriend did and you try to control their action. You try to say, no, I don't want you to do this or no, I don't want you to do that or whatever. And eventually you realize you really don't have control. As much as you try to control your significant other, they can choose to do whatever the fuck they want to do. They can choose to hit you upside the head with a pan. They can choose to walk out. They can choose to shoot you. They can choose to just disappear. Like, they can choose to do anything they want. Because it's all about choice. It's all about how we respond to what it is that's trying to control us. And because we have choice and we can respond to the things and the people that are trying to control us, the earth can also respond to the things and people that are trying to control it. We can trust natural law, yes. For me, it's fundamental. For many, it's fundamental. But if you've never read it, go get the book, The Kabbalion. K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N by the three initiates. Read those seven hermetic principles. 
and realize that the world, nature, God, the all as it calls it, the mind is in control. There are laws to this and no one can escape them. Not in these physical bodies. You can't escape it. So we have to remember, like, this is, no matter what's going on, no matter what you think is happening, no matter what conspiracies, no matter what theories, whatever that you have in your mind, that you've seen, that you've read about, that you see people you respect talking about, whatever, it's all still happening. And you cannot, you cannot, well, I won't say you cannot, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but you should not stop at absolutely yeah you should not stop at uh, believing that that's what it is that, that this is not real that people are not getting sick that people are not dying the swine flu slash Spanish flu the black plague these things have happened these things have destroyed economies, destroyed the world before. These things have killed millions of people. Millions. And yet we still replenish. We still come back. Those people are reincarnated back into bodies. We never die. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you get sick, and you experience some pain, that might be something that you might feel afraid of. You don't want to feel pain. Nobody wants to feel pain. But like in the end, at the end of everything, when it's all said and done, like we, N-E-R-D, Pharrell and, and them, they had it right. Nobody ever really dies. We are here. We are part of this. It is part of us. So let's like think about what's what's more important here besides trying to prove to everybody that the government is out to destroy us and kill us and make us slaves and blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, we, we get it. All right. We got that. Bless you. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Anthony? What's up, uh, Jamar? Tiffany? We get all that, right? Now let's realize, okay, what, what, what am I supposed to be getting from this? Besides the fact that the government is trying to whatever. What are, what are we supposed to get from this? Are we supposed to learn better how to take care of our bodies, better how to build our immune system, better how to eat, better how to, you know what I'm saying? Pay attention to these physical things. Are we supposed to pay more attention to our sanitary practices? Are we supposed to uh, uh, realize that the earth is a living being? Is that the lesson that needs to be learned? Are we supposed to realize that, I mean, there's so many different lessons that we can learn. So many of us know certain things, but then we don't know other things. Like there are things I'm learning from this and it might not be the same stuff that you're learning from this. My point is like, it's still real. It's still happening. Absolutely. We all do, Anthony. We all do. This is not hard to believe. This has happened before. It will happen again. It will happen again. Because that is the nature of nature. As I talked about yesterday, war is natural. Nature is always at war with itself. Animals fighting each other, predator and prey. All of this is natural. We're here to realize and understand our place in it. How we're destroying it. How nature is fighting back. But there's nothing that we should be saying, oh, this is fake. This is like, come on, man. You posting all every single day. This is fake. This is fake. This is fake. This is fake. But you're still in that house, though, ain't you? 
<laughs> you're still in that house when you're not working if you don't have an essential job. You're still taking that immune booster. You're still taking that elderberry. You're still taking that copper. The chelated copper. Look that up, by the way. You're still taking that garlic. You're still taking that ginger. That cayenne. Huh? Why? Because in the back of your mind, you know, it's a possibility this actually might be real. I could actually possibly get sick and I could actually possibly die. So as the whole time you're talking about this is a conspiracy and the government and all this stuff. It's not that hard to believe. It's still in the back of your head. Oh man, yeah, technology, we think this stuff is modern. We think this stuff is advanced. Like, go back to Egypt. They have more advanced stuff than we. We, we think this stuff is advanced and we're dealing with stuff on the surface level, right? Egypt was dealing with technology on a cosmic level where they were utilizing the energy of the stars with the pyramid. We still don't even know how they built that. Some of us do, but I'm not going to speak on that. <laughs> but modern scientists don't know how they built the pyramids. Right? I've even heard people say, oh, like I and I don't want to get too off track, but like I've seen um, documentaries that talk about and I've read about um, how the Egyptian some of the Egyptian mummies had cocaine in, in them. Right. Tobacco and all these different stuff. And they knew that back then cocaine was only indigenous to the Americas. So they're like, how did these mummies get all this cocaine in their system? Right. So they're trying to come up with all types of theories and scenarios of how they could have gotten some cocaine or except for the fact that maybe the Egyptians just possibly traveled over there. <laughs> maybe they actually had a trade network coming from the Americas to Africa. And they're like, OK, how is that possible? OK, you're saying how is it possible for the Egyptians to get to the Americas, but you don't know how they built those pyramids over there? They can build those massive monuments, but they can't build a boat to get across the ocean. Like, come on, let's think, guys, let's use our brains. Let's use our intuition. Let's use our spirit that is telling us there's something more to this than what we have been told. The earth is not just some place that we live that we just get to take from. Eventually it says, no more, you're hurting me. I don't even feel right driving in this truck with the gas that I'm burning every day. Story that the Anunnaki mix their DNA with that in the egg, oh man. I'm not gonna get on that, Anthony, because that's a whole nother live, bro. <laughs> that's a whole nother live. My point though is that like this stuff is not impossible. It's not impossible for the world to have to shut down because there's a sickness that is taking place that is killing thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Absolutely. They were navigating using the stars. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to speak on that, Anthony. I could say a whole lot about that. And I probably will. Well, I won't say never. I'll never say never because in these times we, we don't know what's going to happen. But I've studied a lot about that. And I'm not going to speak about that right now. Um. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I'm, what? why is this so hard to believe? Why is it so hard to believe? Something had to wake us up. Do you know how much plastic is in the ocean? 
you know how many fish are dying because we're just eating so much of them? I read an article that said that if we continue to eat fish at the rate that we're eating them, all the fish in the sea will be gone by 2040. Can you believe that? By 2040. Even with all the reproduction and they're, you know, having babies and we're going to kill the earth, guys. Something had to be done. Something had to get our attention. Wake up. The earth is our mother and we don't even honor it. It's not. And yet, these societies that uh, perpetuate this non-sustainable lifestyle, Xenia, are the same societies that call these tribes and these indigenous societies primitive because they live in harmony with the earth. These same societies who build weapons that kill hundreds of thousands of people are the same societies that consider these tribal and indigenous societies primitive who make spears and yet they're not killing their fellow man. These same societies who perpetuate the, the spiritual and religious mindset of the Western world call the indigenous societies of tribes in around the world primitive because they practice things that seem dirty or where we have to uh, come into contact with plants and animals and 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 dirt and all like and and take these different types of substances and all like there's there's more to it guys there's more to it who is the actual primitive people on this planet It's the ones that have been in control. And so the earth is saying, you know what? The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Boom. Knock everybody out. Remember who I am. Remember what I am. Honor me. Absolutely. Even the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. I, I don't know if I got that exactly right, but that's the gist of it. That doesn't just mean the person, who, the, the, the two parents who birthed you out of the physical womb or vagina. Your father and your mother are also nature, the cosmos. You don't honor her, you don't honor him, your days will not be long, long upon the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. <laughs> I forget where that's at, it's, it's in Exodus, I don't remember the exact scripture, but you can look it up. Regardless, it's not hard to believe, guys. Take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Love the earth. Remember who she is. Remember who she is. She is not subject to us. We are subject to it. I heard one of uh, the people that I... Uh, <laughs> I heard one of the people that I follow, uh, Seven Bomar, say that a person who is supporting another is always stronger than the person that's being supported. So when we think about that and we look at the earth, right, and we think that we're in control of it, we think that we can mine it and do all these things to it without any repercussions, but the earth is actually supporting us. We come from the dirt. The earth doesn't come from us. 
not in these physical bodies. And so because the earth is supporting us, the earth is stronger than us. We will never be able to have more uh, power than the earth does. There you go. I was just reading it the other day. We got to remember. Remember. Put it back together. The old ways of our ancestors. We got members, but when we put them together, we become stronger. An arm by itself is not as strong as an arm connected to a body that has a core and legs. And you, you see what I'm saying? Remember, put back together the ancient ways of our mothers and fathers. The ones who respected the earth for what it is. The ones who realized that the plants, the herbs are used for the healing of the nations. This is all scripture. For those who read the Bible. This is important. We're being brought back. Sankofa. Go back and fetch it. You can't go forward unless you know what's behind you. Our ancestors are calling us. They're saying, let's go back to the way that it used to be. Remember who you are. Remember who we are. Yeah, absolutely, I remember. <laughs> I remember the aloe vera plants. I remember all kinds of stuff Grandma Penny was doing. <laughs> and we thought she was crazy. I remember she I remember she thought, uh, Mom, uh, for those of y'all who don't know, Vernice Burroughs is my mom. Um, I remember she was upset because you guys cut my hair on on the new moon or the full moon or something like that. And back then we were like what like why are you <laughs> no she knew what she was talking about <laughs> she was weird because she was outside she was before her time but that's what our elders they know this type this type of stuff they're not crazy they were taught by people who were closer to our ancient ancestors than we are but all this technology that we have, all this information that we have, and we still don't understand that our forefathers and foremothers in a lot of ways knew what they were talking about. Our elders are important. Absolutely. Our elders are very important. We're being taken back to a time, uh, believe it or not, that is going to bring us a lot of joy. But before we get there, we got to go through some some stuff. It's got to be torn down. Got to be. This is the stuff that the Mayans were talking about when they talked about the end of time being in 2012, right? They weren't saying that the world was going to end in 2012. That was the beginning of the next age, as I talked about in the other video. We got to remember, it's not hard to believe. Stop focusing on the conspiracies. Stop focusing on all this stuff. Like, It's important to know these things, to know how to counteract this 5G network stuff, to know how to counteract... You know, all of the things that, that they may be implementing on people. It's important to know these things. But we have to come back to what can I do? What can we do for each other? What can I do for myself? And when I'm good, what can I do for my neighbor? 
to make sure they're good? What can I do for my children? What can I do for my aunts, my uncles, my mother, my father? Take care of your family first. Then take care of your, the, 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 your neighbor, the people around you, your friends. Humanity needs to come back to this uh, a place of compassion, a place of love. Absolutely. It's not hard to believe that there is something bigger than us that is trying to wake us up, trying to get us to see what we've been ignoring all this time. And that's all I'm trying to say. That's all spirit has been saying to me. Even with my own conspiracy theory mind going off. I'm more than an Israelite. I'll say that. I won't speak on that either because that's a whole nother live too. But that's part of it. I, well, I wish I could talk about some things, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> anyway, so I love y'all. I really do. And I pray and hope that this was inspiring, that this was uh, useful to somebody. And um, I will talk to you soon. If you didn't catch it, go back to the beginning, watch it. Um, we'll talk another day. I love y'all. Peace.